Pedro lied to you. There's nothing here. <laughs> <laughs> if you rewind it, it's yes. If you play it so, backwards, yeah. If you play it forward, it's good. Yeah, that's it, easy it, 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 Yeah, it plays it play Chicago and Pedro lied to you. And welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. A Vince Stone, that's Jordan Swag, or that way. And on the far side, it's one Pedro Mateus, together with you, Shat Realm, dynamic, watching us live on Twitch, helping us form Cocaine Voltra. Two canes. Two canes, baby. Not, hear me out, YouTube algorithm is not cocaine, it's cane. <laughs> C A. L- L- listen, you know, you know, dash cane. L- listen, poor, poor, poor Voltron here. He got the polio, and he can't. He need. He needs help keeping himself upright, man. Why you gotta? Why you gotta hate? I don't know. I'm just imagining Atomic right now. I was like, ah, backstory lore. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, absolutely, hundred percent. What you've wished into existence. So I am melting. I am smelting yesterday. Like no joke. Even Thursday when Jordan was streaming some turtles, I came in here, cut things on to play around for a minute. Twenty minutes in, I was like. I'm out. Uh, it got to be like 38 degrees, 37 when I got home today. So we're playing the, it's, it's down to a chilly 31 degrees at 9 PM right now. And how's the, uh, how's the humidity? It's probably somewhere between 80 and hundred, man. I live on the coast. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I, you're just used to it. It's, it's, it's icky like and walking stick. through jello. Yeah. Fortunately, I got the AC on the rest of the fucking house. So it's doing a good job sucking the heat out. I can't have the wall unit on top of this. So things are going to get warm tonight, but this is normal. A little warmer than usual, so if anything pops, there you go. Uh, blame it on the heat, baby. Uh, what have I been looking at? We got some interesting news. Did everyone see the Final Fantasy, uh, what is it, 7? Yeah, the part, yeah, uh, re- remake. Reborn. I, I saw a bunch of people tweeting that out, and I'm like, what's the big deal? Then I get to the end of the trailer, and I'm like, oh, Steam Deck. Steam Deck. <laughs> they, they had, like, along the bottom the whole time, it's, like, available on the Steam Deck. TM is like, oh, huh. No, oh, no, okay. no, no, no. <laughs> no, which would you think? I don't think this is a native port. Because they want 70 port. bucks. Yeah, no. Oh, no, 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 no. It's Proton, baby. Yeah. <laughs> but it's been deck verified. Mm-hmm. And mm, this one I got mixed feels for because I remember when people were initially playing it, I'm like, that looks like a Final Fantasy I might be able to get into because it has got some action RPG type stuff mixed in with the, you know, selecting your yeah, characters. Yeah, they did away with the turn base. Uh, mm-hmm. Battles well, it, a it, lot. They they they, they, uh, they they did it so that you can. It's like real time with pause. Yeah, uh, it's, but, uh, but uh, the active battle system. If you played uh, Final Fantasy fifteen, it's that. Appar- mm. Apparently, though, you can actually go through the entire game without really having to menu too much if you just set the AI stuff. Okay, just- I like that option there. And um, but the thing is, is it's been a year because it was an epic, epic, elliptic exclusive. I'm like, ah, I don't know. I don't know if I want to pick it up. Uh, I, it's a good advertisement for Steam Deck, and it's also on sale right now if that's your jam. But they want seventy bucks for this bad boy. I mean, it's a, it's yeah. a AAA game. That's, that's it's what a you remake pay. of a AAA game. <laughs> it's it's a AAA remake of, and a tri- it's not even a full game. It's just the first it, part. No, of a remake and, of a AAA and it's not, game. and it's not even a remake. It's you know what? I'm not going to reimagining. I'm, yes, <laughs> no, no spoilers. No, I mean spoilers for a year old game right now. But whatever. <laughs> oh man, uh, put that in your diet and smoke it. You've been starving uh, yourself. I have. It sucks. You know, walking around all day with like a low grade hunger headache. It's not fun, but I got to drop, I got to drop 30 pounds. So we're going to see how you got to have that battle with your body where you're like, no, I don't care. Shut up. You're not getting fed. (laughs) Deal with it. Yeah. Yep. Let's, let's go take a nap. Like, Mm. no, you don't, you don't want to sleep. You want to eat. Have, have, have some more headache. (laughs) Have some nap water. Mm. (laughs) How much you won Pedro Mateus? Uh, well, I, since we're not going to be uh, talking all that much about Steam Deck, might as well get it out of the way <laughs> right now. I uh, I put a sticker on my Steam Deck. Well, uh, three it's stickers. It's like post-it notes. Yeah. <laughs> they're, uh, they look a bit more yellow in uh, this light, but they're actually more orangey uh, for the trackpads, and it's got the brushed uh, aluminum effect for the rest of the body. It was... 10 pounds uh, off of Extreme Skins UK, so that that was the sole reason that I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll try it. So 10 pounds? Yeah, fine. So how many weeks did you last before you played Dress Up with your Steam Deck? Uh, see, it came, uh, it arrived 
here about three weeks after it was officially released. All right. So, uh, two months, give or take. Two months. <laughs> that's yeah. not bad. I don't think that's bad at all, but we'll never be able to put a body kit on the horse. I mean, we can we can injection mold the horse into a new shape, but it will, it's it's like it's like Goku's hair; it just always goes back to its original form. You can't stop it. It's the steam. And yes, maybe you have a uh, fancy controller, which uh, probably was a bit shaky on the uh, the Steam Deck. Well. Maybe, maybe you're in luck, and uh, this new uh, Steam client beta will fix that for you. It was released yesterday, or at the time of recording on the 17th, uh, and it adds support for the uh, Nintendo Online Classic controllers, the Kamba Obsidian and Dragon Arcade joysticks. Uh, they have the show firmware update dialog for the DualSense on Windows, and I'm like, oh, Really? Windows only? What about uh, us uh, Linux nerds? No, Negative. No update firmware Wax for us? Wax poetic on it because the first victim of our heat wave is uh, the was camera. camera. I got to cut the fan up on the camera. <laughs> oh, <Okay>. man. <laughs> but yeah, it is. Uh, they also improved the rumble emulation on the, um, on the DualSense, which... You know that that is appreciated. Uh, I but you have to have the updated firmware. <laughs> no, I just want it because this the the Dual Sense had the like the improved Rumble and uh, a bunch of other things that never really worked on Linux. So that 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 would be nice, but apparently you have to have the updated firmware anyway. So you need. Um, Plug so, it into Windows to update the firmware. So you can just install Windows 11 on your Steam Deck, right? And update your Steam <laughs> uh, yeah, You right? can, but I wouldn't. <laughs> I okay. see those horror stories of people on Twitter, like, I installed Windows on my Steam Deck and I kind of regret it. Like, yeah, no, really? You, you, you think? <laughs> no. Try, trying to use an operating system that wasn't intended for this computer? Man, that sounds like something a Linux user would do. Yeah. Uh, but... <laughs> Speaking of uh, running shit we're not supposed to, there's a new version of Proton out. Uh, it's Proton version 7.0.3. Uh, you've been, we've talked about the pre-release version. They're out of, um, they're out of the Proton uh, experimental branch and into the real world. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, video fixes for uh, VP8, VP9 uh, stuff on newer games. Apparently that was not a very happy love story. Um, and, uh, Deathloop crashing after suspend is probably very useful, uh, for Steam Decks, because, you know, you're going to want to suspend your games and put your deck away at some point when you get off a subway or when someone makes fun of you at an airport for having a Steam Deck. If you're getting off at subway, make sure you're in the bathroom. <laughs> I mean, come on, live a little, live a little. I, I mean, I want some extra mayo on my sandwich, damn it. The one thing that kind of stuck out to me was, hey, we've improved steering wheel detection, but don't try that on the deck, or do, because I immediately thought of the Steam Deck. I'm like, hmm, that would be an interesting peripheral, the Steam Deck steering wheel. Well, they, so I, I, remember, I remember when Nintendo Labo came out, they had this VR solution that was basically just like a cardboard helmet that accepted the, the, the switch in and stood in front of your face. So if you could set up a rig with that and like a steering wheel, you could have like some kind of... Oh man, I want like the, the most deck. Rube Goldberg with like little things hanging out of it. Um, right, so, so many dongles. Dongles for days, baby. I look for that being the show title. Uh, Indeed. Proton. But, more yeah, Proton. There's more more yes. Proton. There's a new experimental. Uh, luckily for us, there's a brand new Proton release, so we don't actually have to go into like the git commit and actually look at the diff to figure out what got added here. But Karma Flow, Rock Opera Video Game, Acts 1 and 2, One Piece Pirate Warriors 4, and Atelier Meruru are uh, all playable now. Uh, video playback and postal brain damage turbo... Uh, Overkill, Slayer's XMO are fixed, and yeah, uh, the, the ball. latest, the, the ball, ball. <laughs> yeah, and the uh, latest DXVK and uh, VK D3D Proton are included in this, which will require you to update to the latest and greatest Mesa or NVIDIA drivers if you want to take advantage of the Direct X12 goodness. I mean, it's an experimental, so yeah, demanding people have the latest and greatest drivers isn't that big of an ask. Yes, but if, you <laughs> if you're going to be running this, the latest Proton, then yes, run the latest drivers too. Yeah, uh, yeah. but yeah, no, the ball, it's like. Oh, that that game. Uh, the 
it was basically the Unreal Engine equivalent of Portal. Someone was trying very hard to say, it's like, oh, it's kind of like Portal, but made in the Unreal Engine, and it was terrible. But uh, no, I'm, I'm happy that they uh, sorted that out. And one thing that I noticed, because there was the Steam Next, uh, Steam Next, uh, Next Fest, Next Fest, yes. Um, it happened recently, and... It, that's a very good way of getting a bunch of people to play a bunch of different games because everyone gets a demo. Uh, and that m- gives you uh, a lot of data for uh, affixing a proton. That's that's very oh, nice. <laughs> there's there's another thing in this update as well. Uh, much, to uh, joy, much to Strider's joy, if you're on a file system with copy on write support like uh, ButterFS or an mm-hmm. LVM snapshot, that's hey, the, uh, yeah, uh, Steam uh, Proton will uh, have better support for that which will be handy for taking snapshots of your game files, I guess. Oh, man, what I want to take snapshots of is this awesome new game called Salako. Salako? Yeah. Salako. Salako. What am I talking about? Salako. I'm talking about old school, man. I'm talking about some GZ Doom. And it starts off right. It does. Check it out. A brand new original shooter running on GZ Doom featuring action set pieces, destructibility, smart AI, it delivers. It delivers. That's GZ Doom? This is GZ <laughs> yeah, Doom. Holy balls. <laughs> Dude, uh, yeah, you even have slides in this. And out of the gate, it is Vulcan powered. I want to let everyone know. Uh, it had it chose the interesting wrong monitor, the one in the middle. Usually they'll default to the far left monitor. But that's adjustable once you get everything set up. Smooth at 1080p uh, with everything just on YOLO, unless there's smoke. Smoke slows it down. I don't understand why. Maybe it's uh, like an issue with like rendering noobs a boot. Who knows? An engine limitation, probably. Something yeah, that's kind of weird. Guessing uh, it doesn't do particles all that well. <laughs> it did a really good job out of the gate holding down the oh shit button. I was kind of happy with it. And, uh, you know, the main reason I tried it and played around with it is because Strider was pissed off at it because it didn't give you a gun out of the gate. You know, because not everything, like, start... Unlike Strider, we don't constantly carry our own weaponry. But I mean, <laughs> Half-Life doesn't start you with a gun either. Is that a bad game? Crowbar, a horrible game. You know what? He, they even have, like, a nanny checkbox button at the beginning of the stage as you can click, like, please start me off with a gun. <laughs> and uh, so if you need to live that life, you can do it as well. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just still shocked this is GZ Doom, man. Like, yeah, that looks, that looks good. really nice. Yeah. I want to play the actual final thing. Go There's play a demo it now. right now. Yes, <laughs> demo is available. Partial, I do not even try this with a controller. It might work, but I, you mean, come on. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's old school to the fact that this is a 600 meg download. Mm-hmm. That'll fit on a CD-ROM, <laughs> like straight up. Right. I think that's pretty dope. Um, pretty big it fan of it. Very nice. So, um, BBSs. Do either of you remember BBSs? I vaguely... I was a little too young to have yeah, to dial no. into a BBS. <laughs> I when, when my my first taste of internet was like proper like dial up internet. Dial up. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but you know, so maybe you want to flash back to those good old days. This is Last Call of BBS. It is an early access game that is a essentially you dial into a BBS and you play some puzzle games. Um, they got what eight games, uh, 20th century food court, steed force, the forbidden Ooh. path, uh, Sayawama, Sawayama, Sol- solitaire dungeons and diagrams, chip wizard <laughs> professional, <laughs> hack star mash and Kabufuda solitaire. But apparently there are secrets involved. This sounds like it's going to be some frog fractions to bullshit. Uh, yeah, basically a collection of mini games with secrets, dig around in the game files, unlock stuff, build some I say, dungeons. Gun apparently. Yeah, apparently. I don't. I don't know. Computers. Computers of this era didn't have that, those good graphics. I don't think. Like, oh, this, is a little, this is a little too pretty yeah. to be like a Syn- <laughs> uh, ZX uh, Spectrum or like a Sinclair or something, right? Like, yeah. Well, I mean, they they you know design factories produce food just like they did over seven hundred years ago in the twentieth century. So this would be the equivalent of um, you know what we're seeing with the hipster pixel graphics. I'm like that shit didn't look like that back in the day. I'm like what mm-hmm. to us? And like you, you were too young, so it'd be the same thing. You know. Telephone of information going down. I'm like, sure, that's how it looked. Deal with it. What are you going to do? Look it up yourself? No. <laughs> you can't. What are you going to do? Dial into a BBS? Can, right. can you even do that these days? Are they still up? 
Oh man, I'm sure there's some. If they do, that is where the shadiest of shadiest shit takes place, isn't it? Oh yeah, let's let's not talk about what's on that network. Uh, yeah, no, no, no it, it's no, no. not the dark net; it's the BBS. Um, <laughs> uh, I wonder yeah. if it has like a, you know, uh, well, here's the thing. You know, you get to learn the story behind uh, Mysterious Sysop, the barkeep, as well as developers, legendary 90 PC manufacturer. Um, so, I mean, if it has a narrator, maybe you can get, like, uh, the vibes from uh, Stanley Parable, right? Yeah, that would be nice uh, if, if they actually hammed it up and went all Stanley Parable, yes. But this seems to be your um, the Unicorn game and the Pony Island game. Uh that kind of uh it's like oh we're going to like do some uh very open and very clever quote unquote uh fourth wall breaking uh which has kind of been a thing i blame um undertale for that it, that's the one that started it <laughs> i don't think undertale started it. i no. think undertale really popularized it but yeah it made it more yeah. accessible <laughs> like yeah frog fractions baby yeah. yeah, yeah, Frog Fractions was the one. <laughs> well, you, you you can talk to the hand. Dude, uh, Hand of Merlin, even. Check it out. It's a thing. My favorite uh, turn-based strategy, tactical roguelike, more strategy. Don't like it, but it is from Crow Team, so that's kind of interesting. It's got mixed reviews, but, I mean, it looks all right. The Hand of Merlin, it is a turn-based roguelike RPG, which, Altherian legend, uh, sci-fi horror. It's that mix. It's that gem. But... It I'm seems to be a wee short. It does I, because um, you can buy it right now. It's there to go, fourteen ninety nine. Normally twenty four ninety nine, but reading through some of the reviews, it seems to be. Um, I'm unfamiliar. I want to ask both of you. It's got like about an hour's worth of game in it. Yeah, it's a rogue like um, that's yeah the thing. <laughs> the, the 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 initial comparison I saw was to like uh, XCOM or Massive Chalice. But one mm-hmm. of the other reviews uh, compared it more to Renowned Explorers, which was a game I actually really did like, because um, it's, it's it's a lot more like uh, choice story narrative driven stuff. Um, yeah, the 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 short game length, I don't know. Um, yeah, it, it, it's supposed to be very much like Renowned Explorers. It's got that turn based XCOM like combat, and it has a very short campaign that you get through quickly or you fail very quickly, and then you start a new one. The problem is, uh, according to the reviews, the replayability leaves a little bit to be desired. I I, I saw this uh, show up on Steam. It's like, ooh, Crow Team. So I shot like the publisher an email. It's like, can we get some keys? And thus far, I have not heard anything back. So I can't say for sure. But yeah, that seems to be the major complaint for now. Uh, <laughs> well, we need to talk about a couple of game updates. And this one, you know was kind of familiar but i don't think i've ever looked into it but i knew what a beam ng when i heard bmg ng for some reason i was thinking like uh rigs of rods rods i, yes. I, I thought, I thought the <laughs> it is Coast pretty much both. that yes it's Spe- rigs of rods with more content but hey man <laughs> uh with a release not 0.25 they're including bold all caps experimental support for linux uh they know that uh this is something a number of you have wanted for some time and it seems the time has come to give our players a chance to experiment with this. So uh, I had to go look it up. And I'm like, all right. I, it, it's kind of a more physics like mathy fuck around simulator. Yes. It, imagine if Rigs of Rods had actual fancy maps that uh, have more than just a road or maybe a couple of buildings or a couple of obstacles for you to get through. It's, it's the same sort of soft body physics simulation that you happen to. To have going on with uh, better environments, I guess. <laughs> I I, I I wanted to play it <laughs> uh, when they when they put out the announcement. It's like, ooh, ooh, okay, let's uh, let's let's go buy it. But then it's like, ooh, there's a list of known issues. It's like, okay, let, let's go have a look at the known issues. Uh, all issues mentioned in the Vulcan thread, which are significant, but, you know, the, those affect everyone. Then you have lack of launcher. Doesn't bother me. Lower performance on case-sensitive files. Okay. Um, graphics look settings look always wiggle, reset. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. <laughs> Broken replays. Missing DPI scale on game scope. You know. The Steam Deck one. Uh, issues with controllers while using Steam controller support, so Steam input. And uh, they actually fixed it now, but when they first released it, the top one was no audio. 
ah, right. Audio doesn't so. work on Linux, Pedro. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm going to go. <laughs> I don't know. The biggest takeaway from this was, um, you know, to quote those things, like the game runs completely natively without any kind of software in the middle, which allows us to get higher performance and compatibility on Linux devices, which is them going, we want this available on the Steam Deck. There's no other way to read that. This wasn't like a sudden revelation. Like, look at all these Linux users that have been asking us all Steam Deck. And uh, this is a good because you guys get it. They do. They understand, like, hey, there's money to be made here. And uh, I think that is just code for, uh, kind of runs like Poo Winter Proton right now. Maybe we can do something about that, which we want to see more and more of. That is a long-term prediction. That is a long-term play of people optimizing for the Steam Deck. And sometimes that is going to involve seeing if you can get over to Linux Native, even though some people will just say, no, it's completely useless. It does have its benefits it have been shown. Now, the other thing is, Pedro, I went to the Steam page. And I saw that this was an early access. Yes. So um, it's 2015. <laughs> that's seven years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's Linux native now. It's only experimental Linux native, but we have a new one. <laughs> do we have to... What, well, what's the holdup? Or is this just like, we're not cutting off this money spigot? Um, uh, yeah, no, I think this is... Uh, we uh, want to pretend like we're actually going to have a proper game at some point, so we're going will. to keep up the immunity shield and say it's early access so you can't criticize us. Oh, I mean, they can get yeah. criticized. What, all right, well, <laughs> I, I don't think that works anymore. <laughs> I, th I think that excuse has run its course. Kind of has, man. Uh, okay, let, let's, see what, let's see what the negative things are people say about this, which isn't <laughs> bad. 4,000 out of like 100,000. Uh, there was no real humans for me to get for you. See, like valid complaints. <laughs> My car broke. <laughs> I bet. Oh, um, uh, he tried. You tried, buddy. It didn't work. Um, <laughs> a full complete downgrade. I don't know. I mean, it, this is, I'd expect this is like Gary's mod for clever people. So it's not Gary's mod in that respect. It, it allows you to do a lot more. This is you Asos can launch this one under uh, Linux, technically. Was, yes. <laughs> is it a video game? <laughs> it is. Yes. Uh, it's, Gary mod, very... it's Gary's mod for Clever Evil. Is it? Is it a video game? Then it's a Dark Souls. That's yeah, how it works. <laughs> <laughs> the next game we're going to be talking about has got an update. I was kind of surprised, but it's good that they're still working on it, right? And if it's going to be anything like D Star Star M the roguelike, uh, it will be updated for at least another ten years. They should have so, just called yes. it Dupe the Rob roguelike no. instead. <laughs> they could have could have called it Greg. Dupes. They could have just claimed prior art because Bethesda didn't exactly own the rights when uh, Doom the roguelike came into existence. But hey, uh, Jupiter Hell one point four point oh. Chaos uh, version is now out. It's the new update. Uh, the previous big update for. Uh, Jupiter Hell focused on the first part of the campaign uh, when you're on Europa, and then uh, you have uh, the... No, uh, it used to focus on the one before Europa. Now, this one focuses on Europa. Callisto. Yes, Callisto is the original one. Uh, and yeah, there's a new mid-boss when you're getting to a halfway point uh, in Europa. There's a little uh, mid-boss that you have to futz with. Uh, some of the tile sets, like the cave tile sets on Callisto, and the uh, like the snowy, icy cliffs on Europa, those have been revamped. And yeah, it, it, if if you're still a big fan of the Doom, the roguelike, or Jupiter Hell um, type of game, like I was, this is this is worth the update. <laughs> My favorite part about all this is it's like, oh, I think maybe it could possibly be called out in Postal Ford. I'm like, yeah, people don't drop shit like that in their game without calling somebody up, buddy. So, yes. <laughs> there is yes. a, uh, yeah, Jupiter Hell call out in Postal 4, which is not on Linux, I don't think, so. No, <laughs> Unlike yet. the other Postal game that we play, yeah. which was Amen. on Linux. You know what? They got to do, like, legit work because they're still dragging that bullshit engine from 25 years ago. <laughs> they're like, no, you can. The only one that didn't what? use it was Postal 3. Because they didn't make it. It was basically uh, they handed their IP to someone else. Ah, right. so, were you still able to pee on things on Postal 3? I think that's like the one reason they use that engine is because they can't use reverse engineer a being 
<laughs> uh, yeah, the the cat is the suppressor. Yes. <laughs> All right. So the next thing we got to talk about is a little bit touchy, and it's kind of near and dear to our heart organ thing. Yes. Let's talk about Total Warhammer Three. It's Total War <laughs> Warhammer Three. Apparently, the the Sega people and Creative Assembly people know that everyone calls it Total Warhammer Three, but for branding reasons, they have to call it Total War Warhammer <laughs> Three. Anyways. Uh, that diatribe aside, uh, yeah, there's the new version. The latest version is out. The Windows version has been out for some time now. Feral has finally got caught up with uh, their release. But unfortunately, if you're going to want to play this with some other people, you can only get, you, the Feral version only runs uh, multiplayer with other Linux clients. Same with Mac. If you're on the Feral Mac version, you can only pay play with Mac people. And okay, here, here's, here's the deal. Seriously, Feral, I love you guys for what you did for us during those lean years. Years, but you had those 10 years to fucking figure out this multiplayer problem. Aspire. Aspire. They don't even make games anymore. They had working cross-platform multiplayer for Borderlands and Civ from the get-go. Yes, that didn't last due to version mismatch, but that's because the other companies stopped paying Aspire to update their fucking games. So I still say this is a fixed problem. Why, why, ugh, it's, uh, uh, here's the problem. Though. Like the fixed problem now is uh, smash that proton button, fam. Because. Pretty much. Like yeah. what, what reason do you have to use the feral version anymore? Uh, yeah, you don't. Feral? And here's the thing, like 10 years from now, the proton version will still work. Exactly. Yeah. Now this is, we're not saying anything. We have nothing to love for the, our brothers and sisters over at feral doing their thing. But like the day proton was announced, I'm like, yep, they're about to switch over to N64 mobile. Guess what Feral's doing now? They got to make money. They're business. They're not a charity. This, I'm assuming, is some vestige of a contract that they currently oh, have. Yeah. So, it, yeah, it's they're the not, one Linux game right. that they're putting out. They're it, not going this. to invest <laughs> R&D on fixing that multiplayer problem at this point because there's, you know. I, I mean, back when they were making money hand over foot with all these Linux games, they could have invested <laughs> in fixing that multiplayer problem. I, but they didn't. I don't think that was ever like a like huge market for them. It might have been because like, think about it. We got you know, one feral Tomb game. Raiders. Yeah. The, the, the three Tomb Raider games. That 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 was significant. We got some, race, we was... got some code, uh, <laughs> uh, the racing games, uh, Formula One, a couple of those. Yes. A uh, Life is Strange. Rally. Life is and, Strange. And uh, Grid Autosport. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, I mean, they've done, like, good stuff. You know, we got, like, Mad the feral Max. game mode, and we got the feral launcher for, like, Game mode is day. very, yeah, that was yep. a, actually yeah. a very good thing that uh, Feral came up with. And, yeah, no, don't get us wrong. It's very good to see Feral still putting out the one game that they do. But, uh, yeah, if Valve figured out, you know, how to get multiplayer working with Proton on Linux to Windows and to Mac and whatever, they didn't, with a third-party translation layer that doesn't... They didn't have to figure anything out. Yeah. They, they did it with Left 4 Dead and Portal. That, those worked fine. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, it's like it they is don't available. have access to the source code. They, they're doing it all with an external well, translation I mean, layer. Here's the other thing that we do need. We do need to point out, because it was this year that I think one of the Tomb Raiders was delisted the Linux version from Steam. Mm -hmm. Feral Sport. Mm -hmm. And they're like, yep. Mm -hmm. And this is always going to be the problem with a third party porting a game because that support is only going to last until how long it's contracted for in Linux. We're not that great with backwards compatibility. And this is a real thing you got to deal with. And mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, buy it to support them. I'm sure they still get a cut, but yeah, I wish nothing but the best for Feral. And however, they're going to be rocking on because listen, there's a market for Mac now. Um, yeah, they got, yeah, they got those there's a whole new architecture on Mac, so they're right. going to need all the help they can get. Uh, <laughs> strange times. Our poor <laughs> brothers and sisters on the Mac side. How the tables have turned. <laughs> Rusty Trails. Yes, on Rusty on Trails. Rusty Actually, this one su surprised me. I saw it uh, yesterday on, um, well, today, I guess, um, on the... Um, on the Steam news thingy, it's like, oh, on Rusty Trails, what are they? Oh, Steam Deck compatibility. Wouldn't you know it? Yeah, it is. Literally, there's no update to the game. There's no uh, nothing. It's literally just them saying, yeah, so we tried it on the Steam Deck. It works. Go play it. That That's cool. Yeah, that's, yeah. Br <laughs> that's break, break, awesome. Breaking news. Native <laughs> game works great on Linux. I have yeah. nothing <laughs> negative to say about Black Pants Studio. I, I like their art style. I like how they do things. And this was on Linux a couple of years back, 2016. Mm -hmm. They sent some keys. Uh, I got a bit of a history of Black Pants Studio because when I first started um, Linux Ingas, just playing around, 
working on good ways to capture just gaming content to show it off on the internet. I didn't plan on doing a podcast or anything like that. It's just people were trying to use, you know, some basic bitch screen capture recording. They didn't know what they were doing. Audio was all fucked up. And I'm like, we actually need to show that games can run. And I contacted them and I'm like, yo, are you guys working on a uh, part two of um, grandpa's uh, uh, Papo uh, and yo, or no grandpa's no. leftover. Um, tiny uh, big underwear, big, something. Tiny big, something like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, this was like months and months and months out. I was nobody. Like whoever, no one ever heard of me. And they're like, yeah, here's a Linux build. Early access will be out in a couple of months. Don't give it to everyone and uh, have fun with it. So to the end of days, like give Black Pants Studio everyone. You got to remember your peeps like that. They yeah, no, the, they got a game. I'll be out on top of it. Tiny and big uh, grandpa's leftovers. That was a fun game. A full-on 3D exploration game with the formable terrain and everything yeah. on Linux in that early. It's like, oh, this is awesome. This is actually really nice. Yeah, on, <laughs> on Rusty Trails is actually like a rage platformer that is accessible. Yeah, too, it's a so rage like, platformer with satisfying thunk sounds when you land a jump on one of the metal crates. It's like thunk. Yeah. It is yes, absolutely criminal that it didn't build a... No, for all I know, I don't really track speed running, but it might be a speed running sweetheart or like, you know, uh, underground like community favorite. Or maybe if there are no speed running records, here's a good way to get on top of the charts. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Get on those letter boards. Uh, default. You use your, default. <laughs> hack it with your Linux or whatever people think we do. Cust custom I, kernels, man. Yeah, that's they're, it. They're, that's it. They're, they're hacking all the FERPs. All right. Well, coming up next, Dehum has a new version and GOG is selling open source Danger stuff. Danger Unity. Now? Danger. I guess you'll never know what happened for the first minute and a half of this particular segment unless Bullshit. you decide to watch the uh, full thing. Time uh, travel. <laughs> oh, man. Now I'm just going to cut it out and I'm going to replace it with like Pedro lied to you. There's nothing here. <laughs> <laughs> if you rewind it, it's yes. If you play it Sorry. backwards. Yeah, if you play it forward, it's good. Yeah. That's it, 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 yeah, it, play, it plays Chicago and Pedro Light to you. <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of Chicago, head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. We got a tier that is about Chicago or Adam Sandler movies or something, but you can get cool stuff by signing up to our Patreon, like access to our Discord channel. You can li also listen to the pre-pre-Super Chosen, an extra hour of content that we put out. It's starting at 7.30. Each and every uh, week. What was it every about this week? Normally, we go through movies and stuff like that, but we got sidetracked because we were talking... Uh, a little behind the scenes uh, thoughts about like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because yeah. that's kind of relevant and yeah, playing we're arcades back it. in the day. Indeed. Uh, deep cuts. Uh, but yeah, uh, you can also get access to our Discord by subbing toast on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Linux Gamecast, which you should be watching right now. Uh, get other cool stuff. You can get access to the show notes so we can uh, put the show where we put the show together. You can uh, leave comments, corrections, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can even buy your way on the damn show. I or if you want to play some video games with us, uh, being in Discord is a great way to do that. I was playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on uh, on Thursday, and I'm like, "Hey, is, does anyone want a turtle?" And uh, Nubbin and Strider joined us, and you know, Ven has Arthur uh, joined. And, uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is where we fish from. This is our talent pool. We're like, yeah, yo. Uh, <laughs> you, you do uh, track mania on Tuesdays and Thursdays also pulled from discord. So if you want to uh, yep. play some games, we uh, got a custom, a we, we got a little hidey hole because people were getting grumpy about us talking about track mania. So, much. And so we just made a, we got our own little track mania room inside the discord, which we do invite you to come play with us on Tuesdays and Fridays and throughout the week. Cause we get our own special Linux game cast track mania server with 14 new maps each and every week. Some of them are fun. Some of them are hard. Some of them are a mixture of both. And you'll just wonder why you put yourself through this frustration because you want to be like us. You want to be old, but you still want to maintain some of your reflexes. And that's what we're trying to keep up with a filthy casual series. We invite you that is open for patrons and Twitch members Speaking but you gotta twitch. get through the lit you gotta get through the litmus test man you gotta Ooh. link your patreon or twitch account with discord if you can't figure that out we can help you Ooh, <laughs> yeah speaking speaking of twitch though we gotta thank some uh, twitch subs for uh, sticking around for a while mirror patrick finney's been around for about 32 months game motron has been around for nine we got a brand new one maximum shenanigans thank you very much uh you want to support some more we got a store store.linuxgamecast.com where you can buy t-shirts masks Stickers. I think you that's keep about saying it. mask. We had masks at one point. Didn't we, we did. 
Then everybody else like masks. I'm are, like, are that's mainstream now. Fuck yeah. Ah, <laughs> right. no, no, more no, no, no more no more masks. <laughs> Just stickers and t-shirts and coffee cups and buddies. So cover yourself in LGC apparel. Dress up like a giant jar of mayonnaise and I don't know, do whatever you want dressed like that. Uh, we got wish lists as well. If you head on over to LinuxGameCast.com, put your mouse over the support button. Uh, you can buy Pedro the ability to break into people's houses all throughout the greater <laughs> Cambridge area. Um, oh, the, the, I added it out. There we go. The, the, uh, the Athlon didn't show up there. Damn it. I, I tried to get someone to buy me a processor. <laughs> buy me a processor, please. Go to Click on, click on my wish list. <laughs> so I have one. Pedro has one. Ven has one. Jill has one. If you give uh, Ven something, you get your name up on the glowing board behind him. There's li- spaces at a premium. This is like this is like California real estate, man. It's gonna cost you if you want to. <laughs> like you want real to get across the world right now, man. Jeez. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Somebody um, make me one of those crazy offers I've been reading about on Reddit. <laughs> yeah. Would Would you like two million dollars for your house? Like fuck, absolutely yes. Um, here, take it, man. Peace. Man, there, 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 there was a there was a house at the end of my street uh, that was, that was listed for about the same price that I bought this one for. Yeah, that that did not last. They took it off the market, and now there's a for rent sign. No, Ew. no one, no one's biting. Uh, yeah, Dark um, times. Wish lists. Do we got any, do we have anything else we got to talk about? I think we're, we're done shilling. We just want to thank you for letting us do this, man. We've been able to keep it live, live, independent, no commercials, nothing like that. We're not beholden to anyone, even though you might not necessarily like what we say all the time. At least, you know, we're being honest. We're speaking from where our hearts should be. Indeed. So yeah. let's get into news. Let's talk about Doom, not GZ Doom, Doom 3. It's open source uh, ID Tech 3 uh, engine. Four. Uh, Four. Sorry, my bad. Oh, uh, and rock, ah, stupid, stupid <laughs> numbers not lining up with the actual Doom games. Yeah, stupid Quake Three bastard. and uh, Quake Three uh, was it Tech Three? Doom Three yeah. was it Tech Four? <laughs> yeah, it, it it doesn't mash up. Either way, there's a new version at one five two. Uh, it's Pedro's favorite version of Doom Three because you can move around with arrow keys, but now yes. you can paste with Shift Insert on Linux, aka Metal Click, which is great because that is a facility that does not exist in Mac. Or Windows, and it drives me nuts every time I go have to use one of those operating systems. I'm like, yeah, just highlight and middle. Cl- oh, that doesn't work. But it works here in Doom now. Uh, also, um, console logging in XTG Data Home, so no more random files in your home directory. Again, Pedro is very, very happy. Also, uh, libjpg, libog, and libvorbis have been moved to the STD uh, libraries. Hopefully, this removes some a bunch, uh, some external dependencies, makes for a smaller binary, easier build. And uh, miscellaneous Wayland fixes, and also see you in hell. STRN copy. No more buffer overflows for you. That's very nice. And yes, I have actually been playing uh, version one five two since they put out the beta announcement a couple of weeks ago, and it it does make with it working. It's it's apparently there's a few other uh, source ports that are pretty good and they do some things differently. But if you just want the Doom three experience with you know, modern support for modern operating systems and all the fancy resolutions, even if you have one of those weird 32 by 9 monitors, the extra long ones, it, it'll work. It, it's SDL2. That's wonderful, wonderful things of SDL2. And yeah, it is. It, it's working. I highly recommend it. <laughs> and, you know, I just want to take a moment and like thank like Carmack for having the foresight, uh, wanting to show off back in the day. Because, I mean, it took a company like it. it, took a person in charge of it to make a decision like, hey, let's open source this. I want to show people how awesome I am. And, you know, you can even excuse him like he loves getting face fucked by toasters these days, but the legacy lives on unless it's post Carmack. And Bethesda's like, ah, <laughs> we could, oh, what, quick, let's make that close source again. And, uh, yeah, get fucked with this. They did, they did make an okay Doom game, though. They did. They found a way yeah. to make something that was open source for 30 years of closed source. That's what they did. <laughs> yeah, that's what they did. And you know what? <laughs> it's Doom-like. Everyone who has uh, that muscle memory is like, no, it's it's slidey as fuck, man. I mean, it looks like <laughs> Doom spells, yeah. Too slidey. Nah. <laughs> uh, no, that's not bad, about 2016, but yeah. Uh, uh, like 20, oh, they did good on those. I'm talking about Doom, or Quake, Quake's what we're talking about. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, the Quake Live, the the, the yeah, one oh, that people oh, yeah. were actively playing online. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 was, I was talking about 2016 Doom in internal, but yeah. they did a good job with that. They did a good reimagining of you know Doom or Quake or whatever you want to call it. You know, it's the same game. Um, yeah, 
So one, one, right. one has more Trent Reznor, one has less. That's, that's correct. Kind of the key yes. difference. <laughs> a rogue game launching when Lutris is Pooptris. Not really. Yeah. Basically, when you want something that isn't Lutris, or if you want something that allows you to, I, I don't know, control it with your Steam Deck uh, inputs. Uh, because, yes, uh, the Heroic Games Launcher does let you do that. Version 2.4.0 beta is out, and they have a flat pack for that, too. They, actually, they have all of the different uh, packaging options. They have uh, Windows, Mac, everything there. It's uh, it, it's basically pick your poison or flavor, whichever one you prefer, and Ooh, you, even it's available for you. Yes. Uh, you can install it on your retro arcade cabinet. Mm-hmm. They've done quite a lot of work uh, to uh, improve the library UI. Dude, I'm looking at it right now, and they should rebrand it. It should be Heroic Game Launcher. Purple and yeah. shit, yo. <laughs> it the, does the it does look the part now and uh it Dude, is if i showed you the theme on reaper right now is exactly this <laughs> it, it, it gives me some discord vibes for sure it's it's the dracula theme it's the theme that everyone uses nowadays yeah. oh you, you gotta uh, dig it, through the ditches yeah the ditches. obs has a very similar theme as well uh it is yeah it is actually a very good experience i downloaded the flat pack and that flat pack makes things really easy uh i just signed it with my gog account it pulled all of the uh, the games that i have i clicked on a game i think it was one sane or insane uh the racing game and there we go yeah. it, it worked it's very very nice very very yep. good <laughs> which is it's new. uh very deck friendly it is <laughs> because you can actually you have like uh, input controller input for the UI. So yes, it, it's very deck there, friendly. <laughs> there's there's some uh, Linux uh, in, enhancements in this release too. Uh, right now, it'll show you the path of your wine executable, which is pretty handy. You know, if you have a bunch of different versions of wine uh, installed on your system concurrently for compatibility reasons. Uh, download indicators on the sidebar will now persist. So if you go to if you start downloading something and go to the store or go to one of the other pages in the app, it'll like show you that your download is still ongoing or completed. Um, also. Still a big fan of them shouting out the new contributors at the end of the release notes. That's that's just a nice touch. You get to see exactly who it was that did all the things. And uh, my personal favorite, this one, is very much uh, Flavio is Lima. Let's go with that. Uh, is, which, is he uh, Lima it, or is he not Lima? I don't know. Is, is Lima. <laughs> But yeah, no, he uh, apparently was the one who did all of the library improvements for the UI and the UX, so... Very good job. They do look very nice. <laughs> well done. Coming up next, I want to talk about a blast from the past. We're talking about Daggerfall, but not regular, ordinary Daggerfall. Nay, we're talking about Daggerfall built in Unity. No, quit yes. laughing, quit laughing. It's a real thing. Somebody was crazy enough to do this. And, you know, we've covered it a couple of times. We gave it a mention. I'm like, you know what? If you're going to be psychotic enough to redo Daggerfall in Unity, you have that. I respect that type of crazy. Well, they. Made good with it. And here it is. It's available now on GOG. You can buy it because fuck you. That's why. It's free. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I could charge for it. We can put it on. <laughs> could. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I mean, I mean, they, they, they're only selling the Windows version, you know, of, mm-hmm. of this open source project that you can build and run. Well, by that, you can download it. And, you know, yeah. here's the thing. Uh, did anybody try to go to the um, Daggerfall Unity releases page? Like before the show and have a no i i did posit the question on the uh on the, in the show notes because if you look at the daggerfall unity page on gog you see that on top of daggerfall unity it comes with a bunch of mods uh it's like okay so the easiest way if it is at all feasible is to download the linux binaries and then drop those into the um the Daggerfall folder that already has all the things from GOG. is Does that work, though? <laughs> I don't know. Did you try it? That doesn't no. cost <laughs> I didn't really have a lot of time today, so... <laughs> so, if you try it and your computer catches fire, send us some hate mail. Right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. We got... Uh, what was that? Oh, no. This is what we're going to get into. Uh, Minecraft has gotten a lot of kids into Linux. Like, strangely, because they want to have their mind... Craft server, and they're like, "Hey, mom, hey, dad, uh, could I get a Minecraft server?" And like, "Here's a Raspberry Pi. Have that." Um, but maybe yeah, you want to uh, put your server in the cloud. 
Yeah, so this is this is really neat. I my first exposure to Colab was working with um uh consulting thing I was doing for uh, medical tech. Uh, but effectively what it is, is it allows you to do uh, Google Docs for Python program. Um, and it gives you like a virtual machine that you get about 12 hours of runtime for. Uh, and someone has implemented a uh, Minecraft server in Python in Colab. Um, and uh, so the, and uh <laughs> I it love actually it. has a way it's to not buy against the terms of service. No, 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 it's, no, no. It's fucking close, son. Oh yeah, no, it has a thing to <laughs> bypass the twelve-hour limitation by switching its own node every every twelve hour, every eleven hours and fifty-nine minutes. So yeah, uh, technically doesn't violate the terms of service, but don't be surprised if Google nopes your Minecraft server from orbit. Uh, yeah, but this this is just really neat, and it goes to show you that if you let anyone run code on your system, they'll either be running a Minecraft server or a Bitcoin miner. Mm. <laughs> or both <laughs> yes, I love maybe this. both well Jordan you got some experience <laughs> with this uh, let's say like uh, can a nine year old get into this is, can, f- paint by numbers but will you pick up anything being young you're like huh maybe this is how this works you get some ideas of how to improve I mean, things yeah. Yeah, if yeah. I mean looking looking at how like a server is written and whatnot is is always useful. And and even if you're just following like a tutorial, something is like, oh, this is how you do it, you inadvertently end up learning something even if you don't realize yeah. it because it, it you're just getting into that mind it's like okay you do this if you want to do this so at least that bit sticks in your head it's <laughs> although although as, as, as a professional if you're using jupiter notebooks to out- outright like write your and run your apps stop it Nay. stop it <laughs> highly encouraged personal use only <laughs> personal use only uh, or good yeah. uh okay so celebrating 20 years, almost old enough to legally drink in North America, is Pedro's, I think, not your favorite game, but goddamn, you probably have more hours in this than I I, I, w- I would say this is probably Pedro's favorite game. This is Name my one. all-time favorite Linux native game, yes. Number three mm. in the, uh, if you count the non-Linux hey, native ones. if you guys are ever watching, I'd love to have you on the show just so Pedro can geek out and I can mute him. Piss him off. <laughs> that's fine so i can gush as much as i want and yeah. no one can hear me uh but yes no this uh the, this little post comes actually from uh, bgp hughes uh blog he has done uh a lot of writing for the wyvern crown of cormier premium module and a few other uh neverwinter nights games and a few other aurora games but we'll get to that yeah no the the big news here is on june 18th uh 2022 neverwinter nights turned 20 years old. That's uh, how old do you feel right now? Cause I felt Why does old. it have the thing from the kitty cat guy game. Yeah. Because the original Witcher along with Jade Empire, Kotor one, Kotor two, uh, Sonic Chronicles, Dragon Age Origins, Tron Evolution, uh, and never winter nights two as well. Uh, those games all use the Aurora engine or an engine that was based on the Aurora engine. It is. It reads like a fucking list of games people complain about online these days. <laughs> yes nowadays uh, i think the only one that people don't complain about is jade empire because no one played that game which is unfortunate because it was actually a very nice game but yeah it is uh, promo material for that yeah that was one of those that i missed i remember, yeah, I remember a lot of people title. missed it <laughs> but yeah it is like the engine itself that never went nights runs on was the basis if you'll go look at the Zorios project and everything that uh, that particular uh, insane person is trying to get to work on the um on that engine is impressive and never went nights as a multiplayer like it wasn't really an MMO the multiplayer but there were a lot of persistent worlds that sort of acted like MMOs which, I, I think it, it, oh, it, it had the yeah. uh, it had the it had the uh, StarCraft yeah. effect right, where like yeah. you ship the dev tools with the game and then people yes. just kind of <laughs> go ham and yeah you 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 get stuff like Dota or Persistent Worlds stuff that wasn't really intended in the original game design mm-hmm. but because you know people are working on it and they're they're uh, they're expanding the game's available content through the existing development tools you will get situations like this and this is why like yeah there are still Neverwinter Nights Persistent Worlds going to this day Aerolith. Uh, the the Aerolith uh, persistent world that's still very active. It's the biggest one right now. <laughs> I I I, re- I remember when I was ten years old, my grandfather bought me a Dungeons and Dragons player's handbook. It took me far too long to like realize that 
Baldur's Gate and all the other D&D ga- D&D D&D games on PC were using an entirely <laughs> different set of rules, despite uh. the fact they were still called fucking Dungeons and Dragons. And then when Neverwinter Nights showed up, I'm like, oh my god, I actually know how to play this now. What the hell? Yes. I want to thank it, man, because it's been 20 years of other motherfuckers trying to get me to play it on Linux. Like, hands down. Like, I remember back in, I guess I had to, like, well, when did it originally come out? Like 2000? Yeah, on 2002? Linux, it, it was like 2000 and uh, late 2002. The original uh, on Windows, it came out early 2002. So, yeah, there was like six months or seven months, something like that. Even Everything, back yeah. in then, back in those days, I'd be waiting like, hey, you want to, because it's got multiplayer. Like, no, I don't, mm, I'm going. But hey, I'm glad <laughs> everyone else enjoyed it. And you're going to be able to keep enjoying it, right? Do you think they'll... Was there ever a uh, like open source version of Neverwinter Nights? Uh, uh, Zorios, Zorios was the yeah uh, was the active uh, effort to reimplement the Aurora engine. There's a few others that tried it too, but those have had even less success than Zorios. So uh, yeah. Linux Nuru, <laughs> answer your question. Uh, Torment Tides of Numenera is based on Cipher System. There you go. There you go. Done and done. Coming up next, uh, it's the part of the show where we talk about turtle dicks. Welcome back to the Chair Position for the second time in a row. This is where we take a look at a game. We run it on a couple different PCs running different Linux distributions with slightly different hardware. We give you a highly scientific chair-based rating score from 1 to 4. This week we're taking a look at TMNT Shredder's Revenge, developed by Tribute Games, uh, done on the FNA engine, you know, that beautiful thing that Ethan Lee creates. Uh, you can pick it up for about $24.99. What is it? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder, Shredder's Revenge reunites Leonardo, Michelangelo, Donatello, Raphael as they kick shell in this beautifully realized beat em up. Uh, we got no mandatory disclosure because uh, this chair position this week is brought to you by our lovely Patreons. Uh, so thanks a lot for helping us buy this game. So let's get into it. How did it run on Debian, Mr. Hot Stone? Oh, man. Let's see if I do this under three minutes. Debian 11, NVIDIA 3060, clean bill of health, windows and full screen, no problem there. Proper button prompts on the X-Clone. Glad to see that. Pixel art, look at it. It's legit. That fucking said, what the hell is up with this theatrical soundtrack, baby? You got the loops. You got Johnny Atma. You got Ghostface Killer. You got Mega Ren. I say, God damn. Everything from the 90s hair metal to legit hip hop with a dash of the beep boop synth thrown in, all for good measure. The only thing missing was the occasional boom shakalaka coming from the NBA jam cabinet next door. But on top of that, you get all the ogs in the game free of charge. Go ahead and grab them if you didn't know about it. But let's talk about the fun because this game is full of deep cuts and you better be ready for them. Like right out of the box, it had me hitting Google trying to find out about these characters. I was like, is this the new stuff? I'm like, no, baby, this is just stuff you don't remember from the original. Like, wow. Straight up TOS deep cuts. That's just, that's just fun, man. That's fun. I was glad to learn about some of the stuff. This absolutely does capture that arcade four-player co-op mayhem from back in the day. You know, it's got some modern touches, unlike the arcade. It's not designed from the bottom up to extract quarters or 20p from your pocket. That was kind of how it rolled back in the day, unless you want it to, because you do have two modes. You got arcade. You got its story. Arcade mode's going to arcade. It's predictable. You run out of lives, you're dead. Story mode, however, unlocks those childhood traumas by showing you that top-down overworld map from the original TMNT on the NES. On behalf of every 90s kid, fuck that game, okay? <laughs> so, story mode, you got a leveling system, you unlock new moves, uh, it's even got the hockey player that you could unlock, so Canada will not riot. It even includes some side missions and uh, secrets to unlock, that's kind of neat. Uh, pacing, pretty nice, each level, it's going to take you about six to nine minutes to complete. Good sense of humor in it all throughout, well done, you can tell a lot of love went into this, and... You get about two hours of playtime to run through it and that leveling system and all the unlockables just built for replayability. So I'm going to say pretty good out of the bot. Uh, just solid three chairs on this deal. Yeah, on Fedora 3564-bit with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti. Yeah, it launches out of the box, old 60 at UHD. Proper button prompts for the DualShock. So rare, but you'd love to see it when they show up. And you know, p- pixel art's all good. It looks like a it looks like a a res like Super Nintendo game. But oh boy, there would be character blindness in multiplayer, especially when you have more than one turtle on the screen. <sighs> it does have that killer soundtrack though? Hot damn! Yeah, Ghostface Killer and Rayquan on there, like goddamn. Um, 
Uh, fun wise, I don't think I could actually play this on single player. Fortunately, I have a Discord channel full of people I can play with. And with them, as far as, as, far as beat em up goes, this one's pretty fun. It is old school to a fault, though, with plenty of cheap shots and gotchas that will catch you off guard if you haven't been there through there before. Uh, the characters are pretty much distinguished by their speed, damage, and hurt box. And I really only think that last one is relevant because, man, I was playing I, I was playing Splinter at first, and then I switched over to uh, April and Raphael. And man, they just do not have any range. And it's impossible to hit anything now that I'm used to Splinter's long ass reach. Um, yeah, there's some replayability with getting needing to get all the VHS tapes, flies, files, hentai, and whatever else the tertiary turtles supporting cast needs you to collect. Uh, and I know, man, there are some. There are more turtles deep cuts than I know what to do with, or that I know of. I didn't know who the fucking frogs were, but that dude with the battle axe, I, I want to be him. He sound, he looks amazing. Uh, and, you know, if you can get some butts together, and a good number of them, too, because you can support up to six people uh, in multiplayer, which is super uncommon, you're going to have a pretty good time. Also, I do want to see someone, like, build a straight-up arcade cabinet for with this with, like, six stations for everyone. That would be pretty fucking dope. I'm going to give it three, uh, three chairs. Yeah, it's a good game. Yeah, uh, it is a surprisingly uh, well done game. Well, it's not really surprising that Emu have been doing uh, a lot of great publishing lately, <laughs> Linux included. But yeah, over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X with the GTX 1080, it uh, yeah it launches out of the box. Uh, I can't say that FNA VSync is a bag of lies anymore because it used to be. But I have a sneaking suspicion that a certain Steam Deck with uh, the ability to change the hertz on the monitor or on the fly, probably had something to do with uh, Flibit uh, finally actually fixing that and making it so instead of just limiting the FURPS to 60, it actually v-syncs properly. So you can play at 2560 by 1440 or whatever your resolution happens to be at 144 hertz or whatever your refresh rate happens to be. So very good job. And uh, it is the the the, the graphics. Uh, they look uh, very Mega Drivey, but the 700 megabytes that you download that would be a problem for that system. But I guess you know if you have a Steam Deck with a 512 gig SSD or an SD card, that's less of an issue. As for the fun, it is. Hard to sp point at a specific thing that annoyed me with Shredder's Revenge because all the bullshit hits from enemies that don't really seem to have an arcing move that are a full character's shadow length vertically away from you and they still hit you when they swing. That's a bit bullshit. Uh, and the enemies that are too fast for your character to keep up uh, and they keep landing those bullshit shots or grabs and you just can't get close enough to them. That That's just par for the genre. Um, you should... You know, expect you should go in expecting said bullshit because it is there. And uh, you even have like the monkeys. There's a level in the zoo where you have monkeys in the background. They're throwing shit at you. That's just straight up of, out of Alex Kid. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I caught that. Uh, and yeah, it is. If this. If that type of stuff annoys you, you may want to play on the easiest difficulty. For everyone else, the other two modes are there. And I guess, you know. Uh, the bosses, when they're winding up an attack, they have infinite poise, but they also seem to have infinite poise at random points during their idle animation. But these are all nitpicks. They are nitpicks. I actually had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. I genuinely did. It's as, um, I don't know, beat-em-ups go. This one is actually very, very fun. The dodging is very reminiscent of a certain... Um, entity, you know, non-corporeal entity-based game, but it is not quite as much of a get-out-of-jail-free or get-out-of-damage-free card, uh, so you still have to be careful with your dodge move, but it works, and I, I can't play it for more than two or three levels at a time, because then it starts to make me angry, all the teeny tiny little nitpicks and bullshit make me angry, but it is certainly three chairs worthy. <laughs> yeah. So much so that we're probably yeah. going to be playing it after we're uh, done this We podcast. are absolutely going to light this thing up. There's your only fair warning. Um, we're going to get in to so get good. So make sure you have that installed, loaded, and ready. Or you're not going to get to play with three of us. Um, Indeed. Well done. Uh, I love the game. I thought it was great. Um, I would like to see the ability potentially added, if it's at all possible, to join an in-progress game. 
from multiplayer. Yeah, like, like just pump in a quarter sort of thing? Yeah, yeah just pop in, because yeah. that was something you could do in the arcade. You didn't have to wait for a stage to get cleared, unlike this. And Indeed. And you know what? Let's go ham. Let's put like 20 additional characters unlockable, and let's just have Battle Royale. Of, yeah, you know, basically oh, yeah, all no. of the supporting characters that you're saving them, let people play as that character. After I want to play as them. the frog with the battle axe. Those punk frogs. I want to see how it does, because after I got done with this, I saw a couple of reviews for it, and I listened, and uh, one... Uh, review outlet said the it does a good job scaling difficulty up to like five people that it just kind of taps out so i just want to throw a tsunami of turtles and aprils and <laughs> yeah. splinters at it it's basically happens. all the or turtles meet, in april meet the and april uh, yeah splinter meet, yeah. meet the freemans yeah right. you know what have gordon freeman be an unlockable character in <laughs> there teenage go. mutant ninja turtles all right coming up next i don't know what the names of companies are okay yeah that 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 yeah we're gonna talk about that in the hate mail segment Now I'm thinking, uh, is a French Blastoise as delicious as a Vichy Soise? Or what are we talking about here? Well, I don't know about you, but... Uh, you want to eat a Blastoise? Boys. Uh, yeah, <laughs> kind of curious. Uh, so, you know, there was that whole thing uh, not too long ago about uh, doing naughty things to Pokemans. Me, on the other hand, I was just thinking... Which one would be the most delicious? Cherum. Maybe you could let us know. <laughs> Cherum, because it's a giant cherry. Oh, no, ap- Appleton, because it's a giant apple pie. Yes, yeah. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> How can you do that? You can head over to LinuxEamCast.com, smash that contact button, fam. Put it in your face. You want to leave a comment on Patreon post, we'll definitely get back to you there. Also, comments are open and welcome on YouTube and, uh, of course, Library or Odyssey, whatever it is. We got, we got voicemail as well. Spotify. We got voicemail on Spotify. I'm still waiting for somebody to take the Pepsi challenge on that. I, I mean, we don't get your number or anything if that's what you're worried about. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, all the ways to get in contact with us. At replying me. Uh, or it, I can't speak for Jordan. I can't speak for Pedro. But at replying me on Twitter is pissing in the wind, man. I get some uh, notifications. Yeah, just just mes- <laughs> message me on Steam. I'll definitely see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's right? the worst. <laughs> the the messaging message. on Steam, that's guaranteed that I'll only see the window as I'm shutting down and I see it like pop up momentarily. Well, it's like, oh, this is the last thing that closes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah do, you, do, you, do you think that's built into Steam that chat is the last thing that closes just to like fucking show you that you probably is like, it. yeah, you missed the thing. There you go. <laughs> I, well, you can be guaranteed of two things. If you message me, while I'm playing a game, like if we're live, that's different, but I'm just chilling out playing a game, you mess with me while I'm in game. That's how you get removed from a buddy list. Hey, um, <laughs> there's no B to that. Just don't do that. Have a little courtesy uh, and don't use, don't slide into my DMs, baby. I will never see it. Done? Are we good? Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 we got we to gotta talk about uh, somebody this, this who used the bl- contact forum. Yes. Blasphema. Blasphemia? Sure, yeah, blasphemy. Blas- Sounds legit. <laughs> Bl- that, that, that's that's some blastoise shit. Well, they're starting out with a lie. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Go, go. Love the podcast, Frontier Dangerous. The last couple of episodes I've heard uh, you refer to Elite Dangerous as being produced by Robert Space Industries, when the game is actually from Frontier Developments. RSI, Robert Space Industries, is the studio behind Star Citizen. Keep up the good work, guys. I look forward to your next episode. Yeah, that that that, that one's on me, one hundred percent. I'm wrong. You're right. Yeah, I got a wire across there. How how dare I confuse the two completely <laughs> identical games? You know, the other uh, publisher slash developer that's doing the space game. Yeah, sixty OS, <laughs> sixty OF open world space simulator thing. No, I, I I wouldn't get them confused at all. <laughs> Yeah, no, to be fair, uh, Jordan made that uh, mistake, and I didn't notice. Ven didn't notice. So, which, hey. uh, <laughs> which makes you all complicit. Got it. Okay. Yes. Cool. Wait, so I'm still not on. Uh, so what are the uh, Elite Dangerous? Uh, so yes. Star, Citizen, Star Citizens is the one that will never come out, right? Yes, Star Citizen okay. is the one that's in perpetual early access. That's Robert Space Industry. Frontier mm-hmm. Developments is Elite Dangerous because they still don't have their fucking account tie-in system working with Proton. Yep. And they, they deserve <laughs> shame for that. So every everyone's getting shame, but it's like different shame. Moral of the story is play the other. I don't, is there like a massive multiplayer, like something that we could recommend to people? Maybe? Uh, there. <sighs> There, 
I know there were a couple open source MMOs like that, but I don't know how huge their player base. Ooh, is. Um, there's a Starfield, the Bethesda game that's coming out. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, if people want to play a game that's not out, they can travel in time to the future. Yeah. Serious yes. question: What is the name of the like? There's a 3D online multiplayer star uh, fly around shooting people thing that's been on Linux for years. Yeah, I, I can't I, remember I, the name. I of am it. drawing a blank on it. If you know what that oh, is, send us some hate mail. Uh, no. X3? No. No, that's a strategy. That's this, a 4X this is, strategy. This game. one looks more jank. I mean, it's old school. No, the, um, the X3, the actual um, spaceship. Again, game. no, it's yeah. not X3. <laughs> not X3. I promise you. But thanks for well, participating. Uh, yeah, that's going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. We got to bounce out of here for something that explodes. <laughs> I'm going to write it in why it's good. Thanks for the correction. That's a good correction. We like butter us up at the beginning and drop it down at the end and say we're looking for it because we know, you know, you're just like, ah, whatever. <laughs> Jordan, you were wrong. Somebody was wrong. Oh, oh, no, oh, no. Oh, oh, no. no. I, um, it's it's I the end of the world. Got it. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go fall on my sword. Excuse me. <laughs> on that bombshell, let's cue the music. You can always find us around 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Come hang out in our super secret Discord an hour beforehand if you want to listen to the pre-pre-super shows. And we got the audio kicking around in there. But if you're one of the glorious executive producers, we even give you a video feed with no commercials. It's one of those things. Now, you will get in touch with me. If you want to at reply me or follow me on the social medias, I'm most active on Twitter at Vinstone, cleverly disguised there, or just at Vin on our federated timeline over at mass.lenningschemecast.com. I'm Rongy McWrongface. You can find me being so wrong far. on the internet on twitter.com slash burning fool or twitch.tv slash burning fool. Jordan, you're wrong about that too because I am the one who's usually wrong around here. You can find me on Twitter. That's, Excuse me, uh, my I'm name is Rongi McWrongface. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at unaccounted four on Twitter, uh, or at unaccounted four with the actual number four on uh, mass.linuxgamecast.com, which I never go to. Uh, I still get the emails from the notifications, like, oh yeah, over the last week, fifty people followed you. It's like, great. I, I, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Dynify are beautiful people. Uh, let's roll some credits. Let's do it. No, I am wrong. We've we just been, we've just been over it. <laughs> no, I am wrong. Not wrong. I'm wrong and weird. You're the well, un- we- <laughs> your unwrongness. Oh no. Unwrongs. Well, we got to thank our our lovely patrons, the people making this possible. Our our advisors, Omega, our third, our executive producers, Barbara, Scott, Michelle, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer, Kohaku, George, Pebble, Tomaj, and Unoid. And our little Nicky fans, Darkwing and Abstraction, a.k.a. Next Experiment. And uh, the sea monsters, which were, uh, I got distracted by the little floating thing. Yeah. Go, <laughs> Renault, go, Rider X, go. Mike, and a Trudgy, Varjanuda, Justin, Frostclaw, Strider, Nubbin, and David, and the Death Notes. Um, Nova, Basil, Chad, Romeo, Marson, System T, Craig, Renee, Leonardo, DeCresny, Kim, Smashly G, Stephen Jill, Chris, I didn't forget you, Benjamin, Doom to the Wad, uh, Stephen B, that's getting real blurry, real fuzzy, I can't read. Oh um, man, we gotta get <laughs> Cherlings. Just pick the ones that you can get. Door to door geek, in my. Michelle is a Litigan B, Douglas H, Ramzawada, Fraso, Zeno, Chris G, Felicio, Monica, Tom, Oh, hey, Tom. Pebble. Hey, Zen, and Menno. And these fuckers. <laughs> Find upstanding cannibals helping us. <laughs> Cheat codes for the whole studio we got going on, like Carl, Mike, Arthur, and Linux New, Aldius, Noctilus, John, Eshep, and Game underscore Mo underscore Tron. So many underscores. Really underscores it. All right. Um, let's underscore not melting. Nothing exploded yet. I look forward to it dying in fire. Literally in the after shows. If we'll you think about week, it, everyone. dashes are just non-melted <laughs> underscores. five dudes.